I, I find it ironic that what I'm being asked to do is take a vote to support um, a, bill, a monument that celebrates um, women's rights to vote, even at the same time as I can't get the courtesy and respect in this body to learn of the substantive objections to my one word bill. I thought I'd show everybody the bill that I would like to have commitment to have marked up. This is it. This is the entire bill. All I am asking for is a vote on a one word bill to reauthorize a program that benefits everybody who relies on the Colorado River Basin, which is 60, 50 million people. I am left sadly to conclude as staff said to my staff that people do not want to give me a quote, political win, quote. Um, and I think that is really disappointing because I am going to vote for the bills um, that are Republican bills in this UC package in general because I'm looking at the quality of the legislation. I'm looking at what it, what it means to the people in these communities to have these bills passed, what it means to the folks in Utah for Mr. Curtis, what it means to, to, Mr., um, to Mr. Williams and his family to have these bills passed. All I'm asking is for the same respect back. I have a bill before this committee that is a one word bill. One word. It's been marked up. It's for a program that expires September 30th. A Bureau of Reclamation based and study program. Been on this committee for three and a half years. Brought my bill before. Addressed committee concerns. Said I would be happy to do an ANS. I've talked to committee staff endlessly. It's a Bureau of Reclamation. Bill, Ms. Bobert, just like yours. So my program expires September 30th. And my constituents and constituents across the West will go thirsty if this space and study program is not reauthorized. It expires September 30th, and we need to get it passed through the House and passed through the Senate and signed into law. So I have asked committee staff repeatedly to include, the bill has been marked up, to include it in this package today. And if not, to promise that it will get in in September as early as possible, and they have not decided. So we are gonna sit here, I will object to every, and speak on every bill, and we will take votes, because my constituents deserve to have programs that help them considered in due course before this committee. So I, I am sorry that it has come to this, but I assure you that I have worked tirelessly with committee staff for months, as well as with members, and have not had a single member of this committee approach me with a concern or come to me or attend the markup and raise a single concern about my bill. I apologize with due respect to everyone in this room that it has come to this, but my constituents deserve to have programs that serve them and I will always fight for them. Just like each one of you fights for the committee, the bills and the programs that benefit your constituents. I yield back. Does the gentlelady object to the package? Yes, I do. The gentlewoman from California, Ms. Porter, has objected to the unanimous consent request. We will now proceed in regular order. It is now in order to consider H.R. 2717, the Herschel Woody Williams National Medal of Honor Monument Location Act. This is very disturbing. As uh, the, general, the gentlewoman from California um, emphatically stated, she wanted to object to all of the legislation that was in this unanimous consent package. Uh, and so to dishonor our nation's heroes, a World War II veteran. Um, that is something that I, I think is um, very disturbing. I'm really excited about this bill to honor this amazing World War II veteran. I uh, commend people's hard work on getting this done. I'm very excited about being able to ultimately support this bill. I think it is a remarkable testament to the Department of Interior that we're gonna be able to honor this person on the National Mall. Um, and I'm excited about being able to see the monument and hopeful that it will be done in time to allow him, his family, his loved ones, and everyone who respects him to come and visit. But our job is not just to pass things um, that honor people, it is also to safeguard our future. And that means safeguarding our future water resources, particularly in the Colorado River Basin. And that is exactly what I think this committee needs to be focusing its energy on and taking very, very seriously. 
because I want folks, including this veteran and the veterans who live in my state of Colorado and live in states throughout the West where there is a big veteran population to be able to have access to water, water for their businesses, water for their agriculture, water for um, themselves to take care of their families. And without the Basin Studies Reclamation Program, we won't have that. So I appreciate the opportunity to honor Herschel Woody Williams um, with this, and I'm excited about um, being able to support the bill. Thank you, I yield back. Mr. Westerman, I'd like to be recognized. Ms. Porter, you recognized. I thought I'd show everybody the bill that I would like to have commitment to have marked up. This is it. This is the entire bill. I know some of you have seen it before. I've shown it to Mr. Bentz in the subcommittee hearing. I've discussed it. So I think what I'd like to do is read the bill to my constituents. HR 3021, to reauthorize funding for the Reclamation, Climate Change, and Water Program. To reauthorize funding, a bill to reauthorize funding for the Reclamation, Climate Change, and Water Program. Be it enacted by the Senate and US, and, sorry, by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America Congress Assembled, Section 1, short title. This act may be cited as the Reclamation Climate Change and Water Program Reauthorization Act of 2023. Section two, Reclamation Climate Change and Water Program. Section 9503F of the Omnibus Public Land Management Act of 2009, 42 USC 10363F is amended by striking 2023 and inserting 2033. And as I've mentioned, we've already agreed to an ANS that would shorten the reauthorization from 10 years to seven years in accordance with the procedures. So I'm very um, understanding of Mr. Curtis's um, bill and have appreciated many years of working collaboratively with him on this committee. Appreciate that the people of Utah would benefit from um, the ability to, to do this Administrative Lands Act and create lands that work better for his constituents. Um, but this Bureau of Reclamation Water Study Program is important to my constituents. And I would actually argue to every member of this committee who represents Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, California, and Nevada, the Bureau, the Basin States. Um, and so um, while I'm Excited to have had a chance to hear from you, Mr. Curtis. Um, I'm going to continue um, to fight to make sure that the programs that are important to Californians um, get reauthorized. I yield back. I am very proud of the relationship that I have with my two Republican senators in Alaska. Uh, I believe in good governance, and I think that all of the bills that are on the docket here today are a reflection of good governance. And I just find it really sad, I mean, I, I don't like overstating things, but this really is a sad day to, to, sh to see how petty partisanship has really taken over. And, and it's interesting, I, I've watched other members burst out laughing, like knee slapping, I've seen members smirking, I see staff rolling their eyes, and it's just a real front row seat to how literally petty partisanship has taken over our government. And I know that the member to my right has Republicans in her district. I know she has MAGA Republicans in her district. Um, we're blessed with Republicans and MAGA Republicans in every corner of America, and they deserve to have good governance as well, even if their representative happens to be a Democrat. And the majority that you all hold is so narrow. It just is such a reflection of how 50-50 divided our country is. And we're unfortunately using this as a tool um, that is not in the best interest of Americans. And it's very clear to me why there is such a lack of trust in Congress, a lack of trust in the process. This is not how uh, Congress was designed to be, to actually be injurious to Americans for partisan gain. I, I just, um, it's just a, a real eye-opener. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you for recognizing me. I thank my colleague from um, Alaska for her words. And I, I'm really sad. I've worked really hard to build bipartisan relationships on this committee. 
a wonderful, wonderful relationship when I was subcommittee chair and you were ranking member, um, Mr. Gozar, I remember so well the first hearing that we did on disabled access um, to our parks and um, was able to do, when I chaired after that with Mr. Moore, um, we were able to do a hearing in which we were able to offer the Republicans an equal number of witnesses to Democrats because the issue um, at hand wasn't partisan. It was about making sure people um, could enjoy our public uh, public parks, national parks, um, and, and so I, I just am disappointed that I still am unable to receive from the minority the name of the actual member or members who are opposing the Bureau of Reclamation's water study basin program um, or any substantive objection. I will just share with uh, this committee and my colleague from uh, California. Uh, I sat on this committee um, and was uh, disappointed with some of the mining votes. All I asked was an environmental impact statement to happen on the Twin Metals Project in Minnesota. And every one of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle voted against it. That is part of the process. Mr. Stauber, I appreciate and have heard many times your passion uh, about mining. I've heard your, I thought, thoughtful comments about the risks of mining offshore, um, where we have less control over the environmental impact and the human labor costs. Um, and I, I know about this because I have been in committee, listening, present, doing the work of this committee, doing the work of Congress, and I've heard you speak about it, and I've heard your passion um, time and again, and I appreciate the opportunity to hear it today. And I understand your disappointment but there is a big difference, Mr. Stauber, and I think this committee needs to hear it, which is we took a vote on a number of mining bills. You didn't like the outcome, and I, I know that is painful, but we took a vote. I'm asking for a vote. I'm not asking that anyone change their core beliefs. I'm asking simply to have the opportunity to put forward a piece of legislation and have the members of this committee give it their due consideration. So I think within the operation of this committee and its procedures, not the substance or merits in which we may agree and disagree and we may be disappointed. I've been disappointed with some of the things this committee has done and I know you have felt that disappointment and I hear it and I know it's painful for your community. But we took a vote on a number of those bills. We have not voted and are not scheduled to vote on the Bureau of Reclamation reauthorization and, and that is my objection. Again, if there is a member of the Republican committee, a Republican colleague, who would like to discuss or air their substantive concerns to the reauthorization of the Bureau of Reclamation study, I would be delighted to have those conversations. But Mr. Stauber, they have not happened. And I know, because I was present in this room. Would the gentlelady yield for a moment? Just one second, okay. then I would be happy to. I was present in this room when there was heated debate back and forth about mining. And you had your vision, other people had theirs, and there was that dialogue. There was that back and forth, which is the premise of the work of markup and hearings. That has not happened with regard to my bill. So with all due respect to your, your both your passion and your disappointment, and your advocacy for your constituents, I think the situations are not parallel. But the reality is um, there have been 21 Republican bills among committee members, 21 Republican bills of members of this committee that have been marked up to date, and there have been five, counting, counting today, five. The Republicans have been unable to identify um, substantive objections to the bill um, that I am seeking to have heard. Um, instead of talking with me about their substantive objections to my one word bill, the Republicans are tweeting out um, and complaining about my advocating for my constituents. That's what the Republican staff is using its time to do, to take to Twitter um, and to try to attack me for fighting for this bill rather than explain to me what the substantive objections are. I've again invited my colleagues to explain their objections to the bill, and none of them want to do it. We have debilitating droughts. 
We have constituents that are worried about going thirsty. We have farms that are worried about whether they're going to be able to continue. Ranchers that are unsure whether they can expand their herds. We have a straightforward solution right here. If we believe in protecting Western water utilities and helping users and fighting for our local governments, then this bill should advance to a markup. Um, and it should do it in, in time to not let the program expire.